What's going on guys? So today is gonna to be a very special day. We are gonna hitch up to the Palomino Paws. It's a really interesting day. If you look over at the trees, you can see we have interesting winds. So the wind speeds, according to the, the news, are about 20 to 25 miles per hour, even though it drops down to like nothing. But we're getting some interesting gusts and then it starts uh, blowing rather hard. So I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna impact us towing. I really don't think it's gonna have much of an impact. Honestly, uh, you know, the difference in towing our dump trailer with the Denali versus the 450 is so profoundly different that hitched up to the paws with even a three quarter ton, you're probably gonna have a pretty dang good towing experience. Uh, 450, I'm probably not even gonna know it's back there. But that said, there's only one way to find out and that is to actually hitch up to the paws and tow this thing and uh, take it into some areas where we can actually experience how wind might impact it, as well as uh, what the trailer does to the truck. You know, how the truck is actually impacted by the trailer because any way you, you, you think about it, this is a relatively compact RV in terms of how big they get, but it's relatively heavy for its size and it's got, you know, a good amount of tongue weight on it. Uh, that said, I'm, I'm not really expecting much of an impact on the truck, but it's still going to be good to see how this actually is uh, pulled by a truck like a 450. Now, if you have like a 350, 3500 series truck, uh, 3500 HD, if it's a GM truck, you're talking about a truck of pretty much the same length, maybe a little lighter overall, but crew cab, eight foot bed, probably again you don't even need that you could probably do this easily with like a six and a half foot bed heavy duty truck three quarter ton up uh, this just happens to be the heavy duty truck i have so we're gonna see again how this tows guys hang tight we'll be right back all right so i have the app open the first thing i'm gonna do is switch to manual mode the app kind of changes its orientation whenever you turn the phone sideways like this and it goes back to its main screen anyways we're gonna go to manual mode which it's currently at and we're gonna raise the front okay so we are lined up and I've mentioned this in previous videos, but if we got this set up, we probably wouldn't remove the two and five sixteenths inch coupler that comes on it. It still has side to side articulation, just not the front and back articulation. So it can, it can articulate this way, just not this way. And if you haven't seen the previous videos, this is actually the hitch that comes with it. You still get side to side articulation, but you get the two and five sixteenths inch heavy duty Demco easy coupler, it's an auto coupler. This is the one I would prefer, honestly. Uh, we don't go, well, we really can't go over any type of extreme off-road situations with this truck. And I would venture to say that most people who have three quarter ton, one ton up trucks probably won't venture out to areas that you might take like a fully decked out Jeep Wrangler or a Gladiator that has, uh, you know, a serious lift and crazy off-road tires. Um, but yeah, for us, this would be perfectly fine. Uh, that said, let's get some cameras mounted and uh, get this thing coupled up and hit the road. Okay, so we are all hitched in place. Got everything nice and buckled up. Safety pin. Again, not the hitch I would use or not the coupler I would use, but it's a pretty cool setup nonetheless. All right, we're going to go ahead and get all the weight off of the tongue jack. And you're going to see the truck is just barely going to drop. It's already off the ground. That's crazy. Just the tongue weight of this totally has like hardly any impact on this truck. And that's the biggest probably difference you're going to see between something like this versus say a half ton truck. This, uh, the suspension you get on a three quarter ton truck and up is just significantly firmer. It's designed to be able to handle tongue weight as well as pin weight better, whether you're going to be hauling a, a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. So that's the main reason why you, you hardly see any impact at all on the suspension of this truck. And it's gonna be very similar even with three quarter ton up trucks. So just really any heavy duty truck should be fine. Got the tongue jack pretty much lifted up. I am now gonna adjust the suspension here a little bit. So I can adjust that the rest of the way manually. I am gonna go into my suspension settings here, which I think are right here. And let me see. Here it is. So we're gonna lift the suspension up here a little bit. This has a fully custom Moride frame and Moride independent suspension system with Bilstein shocks and airbags. It's pretty crazy. Now 
Okay, so we have a little bit of an incline in the ground right there as well. So we're gonna go ahead and straighten the truck out, pull it out onto the main driveway and see how it looks. Okay, so here's what it looks like. You can see the front is still a bit high. I need to raise the foot there. It's about eight inches off the ground actually, so I probably don't really need to. But I'm gonna get behind it real quick so I can see uh, specifically what the side to side leveling looks like since I can adjust that as well. But it's, it's pretty good. I don't think we're gonna have any issue towing it like this. Okay, as you can see from the back now, the passenger side is a little bit lower, so we're just gonna raise that up a hair. I love the ability to uh, simply use the app here and make those slight adjustments as needed. And these little indicators on the side make it really easy to see where you should be from an ideal towing perspective. Okay, I think we're in a good position here. So according to my phone app, I have 47 to 48 on this side and 55, 54 on the other side. But, as you can see, everything looks really level. Yep, looks good, let's take off. So we are on the road. We are actually headed out to North Padre Island, which is a national seashore. And uh, we have beaches that we can drive on and we can really kind of put this thing to the test. But what's interesting now is we've been on the road for about 35 minutes. And what's really cool is that, you know that, that saying people say when you have a tow vehicle that's just much bigger than you probably need that you can't even feel that you're towing something? Right now I can't even really feel that I'm towing this trailer. Um, and that's all due in part to the fact that this truck actually weighs more than the trailer, whereas the Denali half ton that we towed it with last time weighed significantly less. Now, we're getting some odd wind gusts, so it's not constant wind, and I'm not gonna say that it's the exact same conditions that it was last time, but certainly when you go over the causeway here, which is a bridge, and it's a pretty big bridge, uh, it gets pretty windy up top. Uh, that said though, like I said, you, you really can't even tell that, that you're towing a trailer. I mean, you have to look back there just to see that it's there, um, but it's towing perfectly fine. And if I had to venture to guess, if you have a three quarter ton truck, which is, believe it or not, a three quarter ton truck is just about as heavy as a one ton single rear wheel truck. And you can get it in the same cab and bed configuration with a crew cab, eight foot bed if you want, which is ideally like the very best towing package for folks who would be towing like a travel trailer or even a smaller fifth wheel, mainly because you get the wheelbase that you need to help to help prevent sway, while at the same time you get the cargo capacity that you need to help reduce the amount of bounce that a truck could undergo. But yeah, it's, it's towing really, really well right now. But if you had like a, shoot, like I said, like an F-250, a Ram 2500, a Chevy or GMC 2500 HD, or even, you know, a dually that you wanted to use, I don't think any of those vehicles would really have any problem towing this thing. This just is, for me, categorized as a non-half-ton towable vehicle. I just wouldn't tow this RV with a half-ton truck. This is something I would not have done under any conditions with the Denali. I wouldn't have taken it over this bridge. These lanes are very narrow, and cars go by you very quickly when they're passing you, especially if it's another truck or a vehicle with an RV. And quite frankly, you learn very quickly that sway can exist in really weird scenarios when you're not even intentionally doing anything or when it's not super windy, when vehicles pass by you. There's a lot of scenarios where sway can really impact the ride of your vehicle. But I got my wife here with me. Are, are you feeling anything weird with the truck? Do you feel like you wouldn't feel safe towing this? No, you can't even feel it. You can't even tow. Yeah, it tows it effortlessly. 
and it is actually quite windy. I mean, I think it's what 35 gusts right now. Yeah, and it's weird because you look at the trees and there's not a heck of a lot, but then all of a sudden, five minutes later, you get these heavy wind gusts. Now, what's in front of me is a very interesting setup. I can't quite tell what is going on in front of me. It looks like it's a pop-up camper being towed by a truck with a cart on the back. Oh. Yeah, he's definitely, you can tell the wind because he's definitely, his truck's moving around. Even with that small Coleman pop-up, the wind's impacting him a little bit. But, you know, for me, it's, it's not bad at all. Oh, he's trying to change lanes and obviously didn't see me. I don't know what he is doing. And you know, that truck in front of us, it's a newer half ton truck and it shouldn't have any issue towing a camper like that at all. But it, it's kind of interesting because it actually looks as if the camper's moving the truck around a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. You can't feel this Palomino pause at all behind this truck. That's just, that's how effortlessly this truck and again, pretty much any other three quarter ton up truck would likely tow this. Now, if you have, you know, highly modified, super soft suspension, let's say you've taken a truck and you just want it to be this overland vehicle and you've put really, really soft, cushy suspension on the back that articulate and move a lot, you're probably gonna feel it a little bit more because soft suspension, when you're towing any type of trailer, especially one with a heavier tongue weight, you're just gonna feel it move your suspension more. And that can, that can create scenarios where you may feel as if it's sway, when in fact, you may actually be getting what I call tire-induced sway, where the tread blocks on the tire, those off-road tires that you get a lot on a lot of trucks with lift kits, are so tall that the, the rubber actually flexes side to side, and it gives you this perception of sway, even though it's actually not sway. Okay, so we are going again, and we are going to pass this vehicle here a little bit, because the road is going to transition into a one-lane, or at least a two-lane road one lane going each way and then we will exit to go on the beach so it's all about having the right combination having the right tow vehicle and the right trailer a lot of people may have one but then they don't get the other one because either they have budget constraints or perhaps they just think that their setup is perfectly fine and they're not going to run into any weird scenarios. But you know the reality is is the highway and uh, interstates and roads and weather can all throw you curveballs and you want to be sure that under all conditions you feel confident towing, not just under a few, not just under perfect conditions. And it's really cool to look back and actually see the suspension and just see what it's doing as we drive because you can see the suspension articulating quite a bit. Okay, so we're on the beach. There's a dog chasing a seagull. The sand is actually really smooth right now. It's mainly because we had rain over the last couple of days. We haven't had rain in forever. I really don't even need to be in four-wheel drive to be honest with you. You can tell it's windy because of all the waves. Yeah, you can definitely see the waves crashing in. 
the beach is always windy. I mean, I think typically out here, you could have no winds in town, but then you come out here and you got like 40 mile an hour constant winds. It's pretty crazy. It, it, it is so weird towing this trailer because the last time I towed this trailer, I towed it with, well, actually I towed it with my tractor to move it slightly. But the last time I towed the trailer, I towed it with the Denali and that half ton truck. It was just a whole different experience where I knew it was back there all the time. You hit a small bump, you felt the suspension. It almost felt like it bottomed out. On this setup or with this setup, it's a whole different experience. It just feels entirely different. It feels extremely confident. You don't have any issue at all. You just feel as if you could take this anywhere you want, anywhere in the country you want, and it would just be pleasant. Because right now, I mean, honestly, like we could drive anywhere. Do you, would you feel uncomfortable at all with the setup we have the way it is, the way you feel inside the passenger seat? Oh no, feel safe, very safe, very confident. Yep. And again, I know a 450 is kind of an extreme truck for something like this, but on any, you know, more modern diesel or gas three quarter ton truck, I mean, because this is really suited well for a gas three quarter ton truck also, but the suspension uh, just, it's not moving a lot. I can tell that that it's back there kind of, but not really. You don't even see it bouncing around? Yeah, the truck actually is jarring around more than the, yeah. than the trailer is. Yeah. Got some cool parasailing. I don't really know what you call that, but he sure looks like he's having a lot of fun. All right, I think we're gonna find a place to set up and uh, kind of spend some time out here, let her daughter play a little bit out on the sand. Okay, so we've set up camp here. Pretty cool, I mean, you gotta admit, that's one heck of a view. A lot of people travel out here just so they can have this view. It's pretty dang beautiful. So before we start loading this up with hot dogs, for those of you who are always expecting a quick interior tour, we currently have the table in its down position. This folds up like this, and it also turns into a bunk bed by tilting down dual pane European style windows with this really cool blackout slash screen system. Got the smart TV in place. Absolutely gorgeous bathroom. Check that out. Porcelain sink, porcelain foot flush toilet, full residential side-by-side -side refrigerator, freezer. The same cooktop and stove that you would get in a, in a DRV which is really cool. So you're talking about, you know, premium fifth wheel, but you're also getting it in a premium travel trailer or, or overland trailer. Huge stainless steel single basin sink, nice adjustable sprayer right here, nice Furion microwave. Very, very nice upgraded Truma. This is what you see in high-end class B vans. But yeah, very nice high-end Truma air conditioning system. Everything in here, aluminum. There's no wood in this entire unit. No wood at all. Everything's a composite material or you know some type of a specialized material, including all your cabinets are aluminum and high quality aluminum. Look at that. All soft closing everything. Right here you have kind of a hide-a-bed. You have your love seat here, which flips down and then this flips out over it. So you have a queen size bed with windows everywhere. But imagine waking up in the morning and stepping outside to this. And then cooking yourself a meal there or cooking yourself a meal here or here. Very, very cool. Water's starting to come up a little higher than it was. We're going to be experiencing high tide here in a little bit, so we definitely don't want to stay in this spot way too long. But just check this thing out. This is such a cool setup. And I, I honestly believe there are so many reasons why somebody would actually pay what they would pay for this. And hear me out real quick before you get super frustrated at me and think, that you know this is only for the super wealthy there's a lot of folks that will give up everything they have to move into something small like this they may not be super wealthy but they want the best they want the rv with the most protection 
the most suspension, the most uh, engineering, the most design. They want something that they know they can take anywhere. And if they're going to give up a very expensive home that they currently live in, they're only going to move to something that they perceive as being the best built RV you could spend your money on. And if you want a towable unit, this is arguably the best built RV you could spend your money on. Uh, just what they've put into this from an engineering standpoint. And like I said, if you have the right tow vehicle and not even an F450, and I know I've mentioned that over and over and over again, but even just a properly equipped three quarter ton, you shouldn't have any issue towing something like this. And what's really cool about it is most people would already expect to have that type of tow vehicle if they were gonna get anything this size regardless. So, you know, we're talking about probably the most premium type of RV you can buy. The best way I could probably explain this to you and, and to folks who can't quite get their, their mind wrapped around the price of something like this, if you're gonna go out and buy you know, the most extreme watch you could buy. You're probably gonna buy like a Casio Frogman, or you're probably gonna buy like a Mudmaster, something like that. And that's gonna be a pretty dang expensive Casio. For that type of watch, for a sport watch, not being like a super expensive, you know, Breitling or Omega or Tag or any of those, a Rolex, if you want like the most rugged extreme style watch, it's probably gonna be something like that. And you're gonna spend between about 600 to $1,000 on one of the better ones. Whereas there are some folks who are completely fine with the $50 G-Shock. And if you're completely fine with the $50 G-Shock, then you may not be able to understand why anybody in their right mind would spend the type of money that they would need to spend to get the same brand, a Casio, but to pay nearly $1,000 or more for it just to have one that is supposed to be the most extreme, the best built, the best quality version of it. And that's the same with this. Palomino makes a lot of products. There's a lot of RVs on the market. But if you get something like this, you're purposefully getting the most extreme, best built RV that you can buy with a lot of the technology features that aren't even available on even more expensive units and even other types of units. And that technology, that quality, the materials, the craftsmanship, everything that goes into one of these is what justifies that price. It may not justify it for you, but for the people who get these, I guarantee it, it justifies it for them. And these people may not be super wealthy people like you think. They just may be folks who have saved up all their life or they're giving up their home and they want to hit the road and they want the very best product that they can purchase. And like I said, arguably, this is probably one of the very best products. There's a few other products out there that also are absolutely phenomenal. But from what I've been able to personally test, and you guys know I've probably reviewed well over a thousand RVs. This right here, this brand, this product is the best of the best in terms of fit and finish, quality, materials, components, technology for a towable unit, hands down. And that's why the price doesn't shock me. So if it shocks you, I apologize for it. But we're really happy. I'm actually gonna try to spend some time with my family out here and enjoy this. This was meant to be more of a towing video, but I got into a little bit of a rant. Um, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. The truck tows it no problem. Um, I wouldn't do it with a half ton truck. I think I've mentioned that time and time again, uh, but a three quarter ton truck, or even if you have like a super high payload capacity version of a half ton, you'd probably be fine. Um, you're definitely gonna wanna explore the different weight distribution, sway control hitch options that are available for it. For my truck, I have no weight distribution or sway control because it's not needed for this truck or for many other three quarter ton up trucks. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.